Hi everyone, uh, my name is Brandon and I'm a biologist at the Agriculture Unit. Uh, we are under the Fisheries Division and basically our facility conducts training for the public in terms of aquaculture and aquaponics. Um, this is our aquarium room and I'm basically going to show you a number of species that we have. Um, some of them are very good species for aquaculture and some are just ornamentals. So we'll be taking you through that right now. Apart from tilapia, you will find an indigenous species of armored catfish called brown hoplo, or as, it, as it's commonly called in Trinidad, cascadoo. This species has tremendous potential as a commercial aquaculture species due to its popularity and high demand in local markets. It commands a steady price, but almost all locally sourced cascadoo that is sold on the market comes from wild stocks that are steadily dwindling due to diminishing natural habitats and as, as unsustainable fishing practices. In places like Florida, where there is an abundance of habitat and low fishing pressure, it has already become an invasive species. The major challenge in farming cascadoo mainly resides in the availability of a consistent supply of fingerlings. This is due to the biology and breeding habits of the species, which is seasonal and coincides with changes in water quality parameters associated with the influx of water in the rainy season. They are also nest builders and require material with which they can construct the nest and secure the eggs. You will also see another type of catfish that is ironically prolifically eaten in the local sphere. Yet, it is mostly unknown with the exception of the ornamental tree, where it is known as the iridescent shark. These are Pangasius catfish and they are indigenous to Southeast Asia, particularly one of the largest river systems in the world, the Mekong. For unaware buyers, this is marketed locally in supermarkets as swai or basa and is a fish of choice in recent times by popular food franchises that serve fried fish fillets. They are fast growing and are cultured in massive pond systems in places like Vietnam and parts of South Asia, which means that this fish constitutes parts of our food import bill since they are not cultured locally in commercial quantities. Tilapia is our species of choice for commercial aquaculture in Trinidad and Tobago. It is a species that checks nearly all of our boxes. Specifically, it is hardy and tolerates variable and poor water quality conditions. The majority of diseases that affect tilapia are prolific in cool, cold climates, so they actually thrive and grow optimally in warmer temperatures like our own. They have thick slime coats, which allows them to handle crowding and abrasion, which makes them suitable for intensive systems like what we promote and provide training and support for. They are also prolific breeders, which means that having a readily available source of fingerlings is not a problem at all. In fact, this characteristic of tilapia is a possible downside as far as labor is concerned. But as you will see later on in the raceways, there are ways around this thanks to genetic biotechnology.